today. Just be reminded that this webinar will be um, recorded for today. If there's any questions um, that you want to ask, please pop them in the chat while we are busy. Um, and then we will get to them. Or if you want to unmute yourself, um, we will try and monitor that as, as we go. Uh, I would like to um, just welcome the, the presenters for today, which is Ms. Naledi Mudise, which is a registered counselor from the student counseling department on the Ball campus, and Mr. Donald Malema, our social worker on the Mafeking campus. And then I am Marlies van Amarva, I'm from the Potchefstroom campus student counseling services. So today's discussion is going to be about self image, self confidence, and self esteem. Um, we're going to tell you a little bit about what it is and, and how you can work on it. And then at the end, we will take questions if you have any. Um, so on that note, I'm going to hand over to um, Ms. Medise, who's going to start our, off our presentation for today. Thank you, Naledi. Now, lady, can you hear me? There, we can hear you now. All right, okay. Thank you. Now, lady, we can't hear you. I think there's a technical glitch. Yes. Did you say that I should continue there? Yes, please. Okay. All right, then. Um, good morning, students, and thank you for attending the webinar. So I'll be discussing our outcomes, which is uh, us distinguishing the three terms, which is self-image, self-esteem, and self-confidence. We're also going to be discussing the dimensions of self-image the theoretical understanding of self-image, effects of negative self-image. And then we'll also be discussing understanding self-image, self self-esteem, and then factors that also affect one's self-esteem. And then we'll also tell you more about recognizing low self-esteem, understanding the narrative, as well as changing the narrative, and then basic needs that actually forms our identity. And then we'll also look at the advantages of a good self-esteem. And then there's also a take-home message for the students. And then we've also included our referral platforms. Next slide. Um, the three terms, we, uh, it is important that one is able to distinguish between self-image, self-esteem, as well as self-confidence, self-image, and self-esteem are very closely connected. Self-image is important as it affects your self-esteem and confidence. The difference between your self-image and your self-esteem is that self-image is how you see yourself, the picture you have of how you look and how you behave. It includes how you behave, how you believe others actually see you. And then self-esteem is how you value yourself and is more about the kind of person you are. And then confidence or self-confidence, on the other hand, refers to your trust and belief about your ability to do something or to accomplish a certain task. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Sorry, can you not see that the, the next slide? Yes, I couldn't see it, but um, yes, then we, we, we can move on to the dimensions of self-image. 
Um, Self-image is actually re re related to positive psychology, yet it is a distinct concept with a different place. And then it is also important. So the dimensions that we're going to look at is the physical one, the psychological one, the intellectual one, the skills, as well as moral and the sexual dimension. The physical dimension refers to how an individual actually evaluates their appearance. And then the psychological dimension is how one evaluates their personality. This is their biological makeup. And then intellect, um, psychological makeup. Intellectual refers to how you evaluate your intelligence. And then the skills is how you evaluate your social and technical skills. Moral refers to your evaluation of your values as well as your principles. And then the sexual dimension is mostly focused on how a person feels about his or her fitting into the society's masculine or feminine norms. Next slide, please. Marlies, next slide. I did change the slide. I don't know if it's something to do with the network, Naledi. Let me just go back quickly. Can you see the next slide? Can you see the next slide? Marlies, I just had a technical problem. I think I'm having trouble with my Wi-Fi. Do you want me to continue? Yes, please. Now, lady, I think I think um, I will continue. I think we we are struggling to with. I think now, lady might be struggling with her Wi-Fi on her side. Um, I think I will just take it down until we can get her back, if that's all right. Um, with regards to understanding self-image, um, we are working from earliest theories that comes from a renowned psychologist called Morris Rosenberg. Um, this is where the, the theory of positive psychology comes from. Um, and then positive psychology works specifically with the constructs of identity and, and the word self, which includes things like your self-esteem, your self-concept, your self-worth, your self-efficacy and your self-confidence. So according to this theory, it is stated that your self-image is based on your perceptions of reality. And that is built over a lifetime and it continues to change as we do. And that it's something that we have some influence over. So basically what it just means is that your self-image is that uh, is something that's being built from the time that you are born and, and, it, and it finishes the day that you die. Um, so it changes as you change, as you experience things, as you feel things, as you um, see, hear things. So it is something that you have a control over and that you can change if you wanted to. Okay, and I think, um, Donald, you are going to take it from here, if I'm correct? Yes, Marlies. Thank you uh, so much. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, greetings once again, students and colleagues. Uh, we are going to take a closer look at the effects of uh, negative self-image. Uh, as the definition outlines that self-image is what you see when you look in the mirror and how you picture yourself in your head. Most people who tend to have negative self-image, they tend to judge themselves. They tend to create thoughts in their minds and these thoughts would end up having meanings about themselves. Some of them tend to have fear of failure 
trying to be perfect, trying to look beautiful instead of accepting themselves the way they are. Some of them tend to have little respect towards themselves, belittling themselves and feeling that they are not worthy enough. Others end up withdrawing themselves from the society, trying to keep themselves in their own little cocoons of which it is not allowed. There is a theory that says no man is an island. We need to be around people. We need to interact with people. Kindly note and know that your self-image, it has so much impact in your life. Taking into consideration Taylor's story, Taylor was willing to change himself to be accepted by his peers. He had a poor self-image, and because of that, Taylor completed suicide. Luckily, in the end, Taylor realized that he had value, and this really saved him. So it is very, very important to accept yourself the way you are, because of as individuals, we are different, and it is our differences that makes us different from who we are and our individuals. Next slide, please, Marlies. Uh, fellow students, we are going to take a closer look at understanding self-esteem. Self-esteem is regarded as the degree to which one feels confident, valuable, and worthy of respect. It exists on a continuum from high to low, where a person's self-esteem falls on the spectrum can influence one's overall well-being. Kindly note that people with high self-esteem tend to feel good about themselves, and people with low self-esteem sometimes feel shame, some of them feel self-doubt, and some of them spend most of the time criticizing themselves. Next slide. Now we are taking a closer look at factors that affect a person's self-esteem. People come from different environments and these environments are what makes us who we are. An environment can either build you or an environment can either destroy you. Some are unfair or unnecessary comparison with others. A situation whereby you are being compared to your peers you are being compared to other people that you are not beautiful enough, that you are not worthy enough. Another factor that we can look into is lack of self-awareness. Students, you need to know yourself. You need to know who you are. You need to know what you want and what you don't like. You need to know your weaknesses and also your strength. This is one of the factors that are very, very important. Another factor that we can look into is negative self-talk. Try to move away from talking negative things towards yourself, telling yourself that I can't do it, telling yourself that I'm not worthy enough, telling yourself that you are not beautiful. Try to move away from this. And another factor that can also affect you is unrealistic expectations. There are those expectations whereby you need to tell yourself that I need to look like this. If I don't look like this, that means that I'm not worthy enough. Try to move away and face reality the way it is. Media has so much influence as well. Social media such as Twitter, such as Facebook, you name them. They can try to influence you in a negative way because of other people end up being criticized. Other people end up being cyber bullied on these platforms. Television, magazines, they also have so much influence as well. Success of self and others and also failures of self and others can also affect you as well. Another slide, please. Recognizing low self-esteem. People may cope with low self-esteem in different ways. Low self-esteem often presents in one of the three patterns. The first person pattern that we are going to look at too is the imposter syndrome. A person uses accomplishments or false confidence to mask their insecurities. They tend to fear failure while their true flawed self is revealed. 
the person may use perfectionism or procrastination to deal with this anxiety. Another pattern is the rebellion pattern. A, pattern, a person presents, pretends that they don't care about what other people think of them and also their feelings of inferiority may also lead to manifesting anger and also blame. They may also act out by defying authority or breaking the laws. The last uh, pattern that we are going to look at to is victimhood. A person believes that they are helpless in the face of challenges. They may use a self-pity to avoid changing their situation. And some of them, they even often rely on others to save or guide them along the way. Next slide. Low self-esteem and mental health. Low self-esteem can contribute to mental health concerns. It is especially common among people with the following concerns. Eating and food issues, creating an imbalance in one's diet, people who are experiencing depression, social anxiety, codependency, and also self-harm. I think Marlies will now be taking over from the examples of negative self-talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donald. Yes. So regarding negative self-talk, so this is where we get to the point where if you are thinking about your self-esteem, which is something that you can control, um, if you have a, a, a good self-esteem and you talk actively to yourself in the way that you are thinking, then you can control how you feel about yourself. So regarding things that you are saying to yourself, if you can see how that influences what you do or what you think about yourself. So if you look at this, for instance, as examples, uh, with if you think badly about yourself, then you self-criticize as well. So common things that we typically say to ourselves is there's nothing I truly like about myself. So I don't like anything about my body, that the way I look, uh, the way I feel, the way I dress, um, I don't like myself. Or I, I'll never do well enough at school or work to succeed. So that's a way of negatively enforcing your own vision of what you see and think about yourself. Um, to say that you're never never going to do well enough, you compare yourself to others the whole time, um, you're not going to be as good as person X or, you know, be as strong a leader or whatever the case might be. I'm not worthy of seeking things that interest me. So I'm not, it's not, uh, you know, you, you are not the person that can do something that's just interesting, that there is no reason why you should be able to do those. Other people are more deserving of happiness. This is something that we tend to see as well, is I have to be happy with what I have. I, I can't aspire to more happiness. Why would we completely feel that other people are more deserving of happiness than, than you are? Everybody deserves all of the happiness that they can get. Then no one, no one wants to hear about my life or the issues I'm facing. Um, I think that's also something that we, we find a lot about our students is that you tend to think that we, nobody wants to hear about the issues that you have. You don't want it resolved. So it's easier to stay quiet than just fake happiness rather than focusing on, you know what, there are people that want to listen and, and help you sort those issues out so that you can be happy. And then it's all my fault. I can't seem to find people who are good to me. Good people wouldn't want to be with me anyway. So these are things that is going to break down your self-esteem and your self-confidence. So the way that you talk to yourself is something that you need to work on and that you have control over. And the effects of these negative self-talk and the things that you are looking at is the cycle of self-criticism takes away your joy in your life. And it can also even at some point maybe stop you from, from doing something that you really enjoy, those interests. So say for instance that you enjoy cycling, but you feel that, you know what, I'm not a good cyclist. Um, you know, I don't win races or I'm, 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 too, too fat or I'm, I'm too big 
or you know any of those things those um criticisms that you give yourself will, will eventually make you stop doing something that you really enjoyed and that is something that you give you joy in your life um guilt or anger or sadness may stop you from enjoying activities or even trying out new ones so if you feel guilty about you know taking time off school for to do something some kind of activity or you feel angry about being able to do things um, you, you're not going to enjoy the activities and then there's also the self-destructive behaviors such as abusing substance, substances, neglecting your hygiene, and we can also hear, uh, add the thing of neglecting your mental health. That could also be an effect of your low self-esteem. Self-doubt can interfere with your productivity at work or school. And especially now with the exams coming up, this is something that you really need to focus on is don't doubt yourself. You have gone through everything throughout the semester you've worked hard up until that point now it's the small little lot you know last push to get to where you need to be persons with low self-esteem may lack resilience in the face of a challenge so this just means that you don't have the ability to keep going um you know if you feel badly about yourself self-esteem issues can also impact your social life you don't want to go out because nobody's going to like you 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 know uh, closet yourself in your in your room and you don't want to see the outside life. You may also not believe that you are unworthy of love, not finding a partner that can love you. They may try to earn the love of others and accept negative treatment. So sometimes you would go into a, a bad relationship just because you get attention, even if it is negative attention. And that's also one of the effects of low self-esteem. And some, some people will exploit that self-esteem as well. Uh, you may be bullied or criticized or, you know, um, or you will be the bully and criticize others to compensate for your own insecurities. And then a fear of rejection can also prevent people from seeking relationships and social isolation can further feed into a negative self-image. And we've seen this throughout uh, the COVID period is as well, is um, people feel isolated, people feel, you know, um, that they, they, that they don't have relationship, that they don't have access to other, other people, and that fear of rejection is uh, of trying new things also feeds that negative self image that you have of yourself. I think when we get to the last part, um, Understanding the narrative. So we all have a narrative or a story. So we talk about a narrative as a story that we've created about ourselves that shapes our core self-image. If you want to change your story, you have to understand, understand where it comes from and where we receive these messages we tell ourselves. So the three elements of a person's self-image is the way that you think of yourself, um, the perception that you have of yourself, the way that you interpret other people's perceptions or what they believe or what you believe other people think of you and the person that you want to be, your ideal self. So those are the th three things that you need to change in terms of your story. So if you think of yourself in a bad way, then that's your perception. It does not necessarily mean that other people think that way of you as well. So the 12 things that you can do to change your narrative. So in order for you to get a better self-esteem and self-confidence, it sometimes requires you to change the way that you tell your stories, getting knowledge about yourself and understanding yourself. So the first one is recognize your insecurities. So understand what makes you feel insecure. So it might be that you've you're very body conscious that you feel, you know what, my body doesn't look the way that I want it to look. Or that you feel that, you know, I'm I'm not living in this big fancy house. I'm I'm in a very modest environment. So that's something that makes you feel insecure. Or I'm not a, the smartest tool in the shed. I might not be the, the best academic performer, um, but that does not mean that I am not a good worker, for instance. So those are the insecurity things that we can look at. When you identify those, then it's easier to change the story. Talk to your friends and your loved ones about what you are feeling. 
if they know what you're feeling, then they can assist you by, you know, positive reinforcement and, and feedback that tells, them, tells you, you know, you're wrong in thinking a specific thing. Bounce back from your mistakes. So if you make a mistake, evaluate the mistake, know what you did wrong and move forward. Don't get stuck. Be thankful for what you have. We all have learned the hard way, I think, the last uh, 18 months to two years about being thankful for what we have um, because we all realize that a, a thing like freedom is can take can be taken away very very quickly your house for instance those are things that we have to be thankful for accept complaints or criticism gracefully and I also think we need to add the compliments so if somebody compliments you Accept that compliment because that person really is giving you something that they feel you need to hear. The same is for complaints and criticism. Somebody criticizes you, accept the criticism, but also do not make it into a negative thing. Try and be positive at all times. Look at, look at the mirror and smile. See yourself for who you are in the mirror and be happy with what you have. And then the fake it till you make it. So if you keep on telling yourself that positive reinforcement, I am happy, I am amazing, I am great. If you say it long enough, hard enough, and many times as possible, you will get there. Identify your successes. Identify the things that you're good at and focus on those because that gives you a positive, again, positive reinforcement helps build your self-confidence. Then stick to your principles. So if you've decided, you know what, there's one thing that I'm not going to cross, stick to that. Um, stick to your principles. If you start changing yourself to be like other people, uh, you know, or to fit into an environment where you think other people want a specific kind of you, then you are going to start falling into the trap of getting less and less of your own self-confidence. Help others. Try and help others. If you help somebody else that's not feeling great, it's going to help you in the end feeling better. And then try and avoid perfectionism. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is ever going to be perfect. And the sooner we accept that, the better for ourselves. Okay. In the basics, that we need to form our identity. So you'll see there's a lot of things that influences our identity. And that's what we think about ourselves. So you need to feel loved and accepted. So we need that sense of belonging. We need to feel valued and accepted. So it's a sense of worthiness. And we need to feel adequate. So a sense of competence. So all of those things are very important when it gets to your identity. And you will see in terms of the, the social identity, there's so many things that influence that identity. So that could be your gender, your race, your ethnicity, your religion, your spirituality, your socioeconomic class, your nationality, your age, your sexual orientation, your physical, emotional, or mental ability. All of those things influence your identity and what you think and feel about yourself. Advantages of a good self-esteem is you appreciate life. You um, are a leader to others. You accept failure with grace. It doesn't, sub you don't submit to peer pressure. You're not a threat to others. You believe in yourself. You are willing to try new things and you change the bad things that you can change. Okay. Um, Naledi, are you back yet? Uh, Naledi is not yet back, but I can just take over from um, here. Um, you can take over, but I'm here. Yeah, I've, I've been here. Okay. Just that I've been having technical glitches. Okay, but I think if you can maybe take the the take home messages here in the end, that would be great. All right. Okay. So just a take home message uh, for you, students. Be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is what what is merely what others think of you. And this was written by John Wooden. And then the next one is, as long as you look for someone else to validate who you are by seeking their approval, you are setting yourself up for a disaster. You have to be whole and complete in yourself. No one can give you that. You have to know who you are. 
What others say is actually irrelevant. And this was written by Nick Shelf. And then there's another one which says, to be beautiful means to be yourself. You don't need to be accepted by others. You need to accept yourself. And this is Hen. And then the self image is the key to human personality and human behavior. Change the self image and manage the personality and the behavior. This was written by Maxwell Maltz. Thank you very much. And then we can just move on to our referral platforms that we have for the students. And then um, Marlies will be taking questions. Thank you. Hi, lady. So, so this is our referral plot platforms. If you need any form of guidance or emotional support, um, you all have our contact details. It is available um, on Infundi and on, on the websites and also on our social media pages um, for Mike my, my King Potch and Funner Bale Park. And then also there is our social social media areas that's our Facebook and our Instagram and our web page if you need any information. Um, then I'm going to ask John Lee just to play a short video clip for us just to sum up um, what we've been trying to tell you. And then once we've completed that, um, then we will open the floor for questions if there are any. Thank you, John Lee. I'm a forensic artist. Worked for the San Jose Police Department from 1995 to 2011. I showed up to a place I'd never been, and there was a guy with a drafting board. We couldn't see them, they couldn't see us. Tell me about your hair. I didn't know what he was doing, but then I could tell after several questions that he was drawing me. Tell me about your chin. It kind of protrudes a little bit, hmm. especially when I smile. Your jaw. My mom told me I had a big jaw. What would be your most prominent feature? I kind of have a fat, rounder face. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. I would say I have a pretty big forehead. Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and then they leave. I don't see them. All I had been told before the sketch was to get friendly with this other woman, Chloe. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about uh, a person you met earlier, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their face. She was thin, so you could see her cheekbones. And her chin, it was a nice, thin chin. She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke. Cute nose. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. So here we are. Mm -hmm. This is the sketch that you helped me create. And that's a sketch that somebody described of you. So yeah, that's... She looks closed off and fatter, sadder too. Mm -hmm. The second one looks more open, friendly, and happy. Mm -hmm. I should be more grateful of my natural beauty. It impacts the choices and the friends that we make, the jobs we apply for, how we treat our children. It impacts everything. It couldn't be more critical to your happiness. Do you think you're more beautiful than you say? Yeah. Yeah. We spend a lot of time as women analyzing and trying to fix the things that aren't quite right. And we should spend more time appreciating the things that we do like. Okay, are there any questions from anybody? I 
I don't see any microphones opening up. Is there anybody that wants to pop a question into the chat box? Are there any questions, fellow students? Okay. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. I just bounced into the meeting, so I missed a lot, but I would like to ask one question. Yes, please do. Okay. Uh, I'm a very person who lacks a bit of confidence because of my, uh, I don't know how to put it, but because of my appearance, you know. Mm -hmm. So it gives me a hard time. I want to know on how to, to build up confidence from my appearance only. But other than that, academically, I'm confident everything but the outward appearance, you know. Okay. On how to build it up, yes. How to build up your outward appearance or how to build your self-confidence? Confidence, confidence your because appearance. when you look good, you feel good. And then at the end, you have confidence. Yes. So I would like to like to know on how to build that confidence. That, that, that was my question because I, have, I came late to the meeting. Okay. Yes. So I think the main thing about building confidence is firstly accepting who you are. Um, and then focusing on the things that you feel happy with, that you know are your, your strengths and your strong points. So if you are only going to focus on your outward appearance, then you're never going to build your self-confidence because you have to, to look at not only how you are on the outside, but who you are on the inside, because that's more important than the outside. Unfortunately, I think with social media and the, and the world that we are living in, there's so much focus on the outside, and that is why we compare ourselves to others the whole time. So the only way to build your self-confidence about your outward appearance is to be, feel comfortable within your own skin. Because if you are comfortable with yourself, no matter what you look like and, and, and what you might appear to look like to others, you will never know um, what other people might think of you. Their idea of what they see you, just as the video showed, is your idea of what people see and other people's idea of what they see is quite different. Does that yes. make sense? Yeah, it does make sense because I love that part of the mirror, like watch yourself in the mirror and smile. I like that point. Yes. So look in, look in the mirror and smile. No? Um, and be, the most important thing is be comfortable within your own skin. Yes. Be happy with who you are and what you have. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. Uh, I'm fine. Okay. okay, good. Okay, I think there's a question in the chat box. Can social anxiety cause, can it be caused by low self esteem? Yes, it can. Because if you don't feel comfortable with yourself, and if you don't um, have a, a high self-esteem, then you can be anxious about going out. And that's that's what we previously referred to is you will, um, sorry, Kamuhelu, uh, can I maybe just ask you to mute your microphone? Okay. Thank you so much. So, Laudry, um, Yes, it can definitely be caused by low self-esteem because you are, if you don't feel comfortable about yourself, you don't want to go outside, you don't want to meet new people, you don't want to socialize with other people. So it can definitely cause social anxiety um, if you don't have, you know, a, a higher self-esteem. So the main thing there is, again, focusing on what you have, um, you know, starting small, doing a one-on-one -on -one session instead of, instead of going to a party which has a huge crowd of 30 or 40 or 50 people. Um, and then building on the things that you are comfortable with and, and take it one step at a time. But yes, um, I hope that answers your question. Are there any other questions? Oh, Brandon, you asked how do we understand ourselves? Uh, yes, that, like 
um, with the self-awareness thing, well, more to it in like the beginning, it says you must understand the individual before you can look at what society and then like community around you, environment, sorry, says about you. Mm-hmm. So like, how do we take the time to understand ourselves and honestly, not know our weaknesses and strengths, but just like know who we are and more comfortable with, like, with who we are exactly. Not necessarily in our skin, but like who we are and the things that we do. Like, how do we accept that? How do you accept that? Okay. I think that the, the main thing is um, sitting down and reflecting on, on, you know, what is important for you. So thinking about what is your values, uh, what is value, valuable to you. So that could be anything from, you know, um, uh, if you are you a materialistic person, you know, do you enjoy having lots and lots of money or are you an emotional person? Um, do you enjoy having good relationships with a few people or or are you, you know, a person that would rather be a social butterfly and have many friends, but not a close one. So determining those kind of things. And, and this is where something like uh, journaling, for instance, comes in quite handy because you can write down what you're feeling, what you're thinking about things. And if you need, if you are confronted by different situations is understanding how you if you reflect on how you behaved in a specific situation, you will start to realize what are the things that is made up of that. Thinking about how you've grown up, um, you know, what did my parents teach me or my grandparents teach me or my aunts or uncles who, or whoever raised you? What did they teach me? What are the values that they taught me to be responsible, for instance? So if you you start first with your values and your beliefs in terms of what do you believe right and wrong is. Um, So getting to that point where you know, you know, in a certain situation, I will behave in this manner. And from there, built on your self-awareness of understanding where a specific idea in your mind is coming from. So say, for instance, we are... Uh, talking about um, identity, for instance. So if you've been, um, you know, from as a child, you've been told there are only two identities and that's the only two that matters. At some point, you have to realize that there's other influences and other things that can maybe happen that can change that perspective. But you have to be open to the new ideas. So if you are not open to those ideas, then there's going to be internal conflict, yes, but also external conflict, because now you are bombarded with other ideas of identity, but it doesn't gel well with your idea of identity. Does that make sense, Brandon? Does that explain what you are looking for? It does. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I think the way the, the recordings are normally uploaded on Infundi, if I'm correct, Henry. Um, it's all, um, mostly available on ACD's Ifundi page. So once we've, we've completed all of our previous sessions, it's also available there where you can listen to it anytime. So, Maria, how do you teach yourself to handle criticism? That is quite a difficult thing, I think, to do for anybody because nobody likes to be criticized. I think the main thing that you have to start off with is listen to the criticism. Not So it's active listening. So that's the, the first thing is listen to the criticism and then evaluate what is being said. So if you've evaluated the criticism and you say, okay, but this has to be very honestly. Um, this person has a point, yes, or no, this person is criticizing me because they have a point to make or they, you know, they're being nasty or a bully or whatever the case might be. So if you truly reflect on what is being said and you realize this person has a point, it can be something I can work on, then it will be much easier to handle that criticism. But the main thing is that for most people, when we get criticized, we are going, we go into a fight or flight mode. So we either turn inwards, you know, and, and start chastising ourselves for the criticism, 
or we lash out because of the criticism. So we, we get angry. You know, you have no idea what you're saying. You know, you are just criticizing whatever the case might be. So to teach yourself how to handle criticism, I think the main thing is to get quiet, listen to the criticism, and then reflect in terms of what is being said. Is it an accurate reflection of what that person is seeing? Or is it something that I really need to work on? Does that answer your question, Zalmari? Okay, so you say that you are somewhat of a people pleaser. So in most cases, people pleasers would definitely not find anything as constructive. Um, I think most people who are people pleasers will find any criticism um, as a negative. It will not be constructive. So I think um, evaluating criticism, firstly, I think is to note who the criticism is coming from. So if it is somebody that you know very well, that knows you very well, or that you've known very long, uh, you know, if it is a parent, and it makes you, uh, you know, if, if you can think about the crit criticism that they've been given, uh, if it is in the sense, if you make changes and it is for the better of yourself and others, then I would say then it's constructive. But it, if, if it is keep keeping you, keep being, being putting you down, for instance. So say for instance, it is, it is a, a parent or a brother or a sister that would tell you the whole time, you know what, you're fat, you're ugly, nobody likes you. That's obviously not constructive because that just breaks you down as a person. Um, but being, uh, you know, uh, coming from a friend or a family, but, but even if, if you are in a job environment or within your friend environment, so those kind of things that makes you feel bad about yourself, that I would never say is constructive criticism. So I think that's a way to maybe evaluate the criticism. So yes, sometimes it's just rude, um, but sometimes it's just, as we said in the presentation as well, it's a way of lashing out because they have their own self-esteem issues. So if it makes you feel bad about yourself, then it's ne not necessarily very constructive. I don't know if that answers your question. That's a quite a difficult one to, to answer. Okay. Anyone else? No more questions? Can I say thank you for everybody. Thank you to Donald and Naledi for the presentation for, for today.